Okay, I want to get up here early so I get extra time. <laughs> so there's an old saying, once you know one state, you know one state. So I'm going to tell you this story through the lens of Watech and hope you, hopefully you can apply the lessons to your state. So, wait a minute, why am I not moving forward? There we go. So Watech got created by three organizations coming together. And the very first time I got a consolidated statement, it told me I was going to lose $22 million by the end of the year. We ended up, by the end of this year, being 500,000 500, in the black and only 5 million uh, under after the biennium. So let me tell you what we did to be able to create that, those results. The first thing we did, hello. First, the first thing that we did was we ran this project we called congruency. The, what we decided is we had to make all of our lines of business congruent with our published strategies, with our org chart, and most importantly, our financial architecture. Because if you don't have a great financial architecture, you t can't do good reporting. And, there, and without good reporting, you never get good public policy. So we tried to create alignment around that. And to do that, you have to have a vision. And to have a vision, you got to have a picture. So this is my picture for what our organization looks like. And I want to just walk you through it and kind of tell you about the dynamics of each part of it. On the top, you got management and agency shared services. The key thing to know about the agency shared services are that, um, that you got to protect your overhead in them. right? Management and shared services end up working together. And you can see some details here. Uh, but a lot of the shared services end up being considered overhead by your budget directors, and you've got to rage against that. These are the key things it takes to actually deliver IT services. So when you're constructing your financial architecture, you've got to separate overhead from the shared services and protect the stuff that isn't really overhead so you don't end up getting cut in the wrong places. So defend your overhead. Then the next thing you got to do is you got to take all your services and you've got to characterize them by the type of revenue that they generate or that they, that they get. There are two parts of two revenues for us. Some of our services are come from allocated services and some come for fee for services. We, we thought it was really important to be able to characterize every line so that we could understand the dynamics between allocation and fee-for-services and take advantage of each one of those. So let me talk about those really quick. <clears throat> for allocated services, the key thing is that your revenue never goes up unless your caseload goes up. So the, to be able to keep your revenue in line with your cost, you have to have, you have to baseline your fees so that when your caseload goes up, you have a case for having the revenue go up. Key thing around expenses is people want to do all you can eat, you got to defend against that. For fee for services, the key thing here is revenue grows up when you invest in sales. Government hates to invest in sales. Nobody ever wants to invest in sales. But if you don't, your revenue doesn't go up and you can't keep your expenses in line. So those are the key dynamics. What we did is classify all of our businesses, and then we started a whole process of reviews. We started with quarterly business reviews. Once a quarter, my executive team sits down with the service owners and goes over four big major areas so that we can catch trends. Once a month, my executive team sits down and we go over our financial dashboard where we work through each area and every line of business and look for places that are out of whack. And then arguably the most important thing is you only get to move your strategic direction by focusing on attrition. So we have a biweekly hiring review where we ask ourselves, if, if we have this one open headcount, are we spending it in the right place? Where would you put it if you had one more person, the lifeboat drill? So I talked a lot about M&O. Let me tell you a few things about new projects and some of the dynamics that I see going on in the market, particularly around new projects. 
because I think that uh, there's a sea change going on and we are, um, the way that we fund new projects is about to change in a, in a dynamic, or in an important way. So I think that the California Child Welfare Service is, a, um, is the beginning of a major sea change. And uh, what's happening there is they took a $300 million, basically CMS said, you're not gonna do one $300 million project, we want you to do $301 million projects. And you're seeing that emphasis, that uh, a focus on decreasing the time to value and incrementalism, changing the way people fund, changing the way the ledge funds, changing the way the, um, uh, the major organizations, the federal dollars fund. So that is gonna be a key driver going forward. So I also wanna talk really briefly and give some ad advice to the vendors in the room. Key thing to know, vendors, states are really agile. We just run on two-year sprints. And everything happens at the very beginning of that sprint. You can't wait till the RFI. You have to identify, you have to be engaged with us when we're identifying the need rather than waiting for us to come to you in the form of an RFP. So, you know, get engaged early. Second piece of advice is learn the color of money. Huge difference between the buying dynamic between money that's from general fund state than something that's coming from a CMS match. You shouldn't let your salespeople in the room until they know the funding source of every agency and where it's gonna come from. The other key thing you need to know is where are the feds spending their money? States think of the feds as a piggy bank and the biggest value that you can bring to us is knowing where the federal government is spending their money because we think of them as a piggy bank, they think of themselves as driving, uh, driving public policy. So be in line with what policy they're trying to do. And then I think this is the key thing. If you can help me get my project funded, that's when I'm gonna open my beleaguered checking account. Right? The first increment you should be trying to sell states is working with me to figure out how I can get the budget office, the ledge, the feds to fund my project. That's the thing that's gonna make the most difference. So uh, the, the, one, the takeaway I want everybody to leave with is finances are strategic. Understanding all the different dynamics between M&O, between new spend, between what the color of money are is key both for the success of the agencies but also in, in answering to the, the question that I hear partners ask all the time, which is how can we help? You can help by um, understanding those dynamics. Thank you.